So this is a video for uh, the C. Davis uh, LC uh, benchtop crimp system, and uh, this is not our normal stripped-down entry-level demo machine. This is a machine uh, that was special ordered by a customer with a series of upgrades and special features that make it worth uh, showing uh, because um, uh, a lot of people ask about these features. Uh, so there's a couple of things that you'll notice immediately. Uh, these are the upgraded stainless steel uh, slides. Uh, this is what the aluminum slides look like. They're the very same thing, uh, but uh, the difference is uh, that the stainless steel ones are what we use on the GWT line. They are much more durable and give you a much longer cycle life. Uh, this is a machined aluminum bowl. We make these. Uh, it is an upgrade. The entry-level LC comes with this. This is a cast resin bowl. Uh, and likewise, the aluminum bowl uh, gives a much longer uh, use life, and it also uh, enables the use of special escapements. This does not have a special escapement. It is a standard slide, but it is one of the upgraded steel slide units. So that's worth calling out. Um, uh, other things worth calling out uh, is that there's a series of upgrades on this machine and special options. This is uh, a machine that has a contact sensor. So there's not just the fiber sensor for the puff here um, that helps with part feeding, but there's also in the back of the positioner here a second fiber sensor. And so the LC, uh, this LC is not on a pure timer-based system it waits until it sees the contact show up here before engaging the grip and moving the stopper. And that is the other feature on this LC um, that we've been getting a lot of interest in lately. This is our rotary contact stopper system. It was developed um, at the request um, of one of our customers uh, that does uh, multi-conductor cable with short leads like this. And they were not able to easily use our standard funnels uh, and wanted basically clear access to the crimp head to be able to work with very short leads. And so the way that this works is when the contact is fired from the escapement here, it goes through the parts tube and during that cycle this will go in front, the stopper, to set the correct crimp depth and then after the contact is gripped and held by the indenters it will pull out of the way. Uh, and uh, allow access to the ferrule itself for insert, so you can work with very short leads. Uh, and so this machine is optimized for bench top use for multi-conductor cable. Now you can use normal wire in it too, uh, but you know fundamentally um, the contact stopper is, is optimized for access with short leads. Um, there's a couple of other things on here I'll point out at a top level. Uh, this is a fixed pressure regulator, uh, so now it can just be plugged into whatever pressure uh, air that you have um, at your facility without needing to be on its own regulator. Um, uh, and uh, that's just one point of you know, uh, problems that people have had figuring out the pressure. Well, now it's set for you. This is not adjustable. Uh, uh, and um, the crimp head has been uh, redesigned. We get a little bit better leverage now. Uh, we also have these stainless steel covers, which are much more rugged than the old plastic ones. Uh, and then there's a lot of upgrades that have been done in the cabinet itself. And after we do uh, some videos of the crimp process, uh, I will kind of take off the covers and open up the cabinet and show you the guts of this thing because uh, we've made a lot of improvements. And any of you that have the old LCs uh, will see that uh, what we've done is, as we do repairs and machines come back and we get feedback from our customers, we're always trying to optimize and improve these products. And so the LC has evolved a lot over the 10 to 15 years we've been making it. Um, and we've, one issue at a time, tried to identify things that either wear out or fail or break um, or people complain about, and we have tried to optimize the machine. So uh, I'm going to change camera angles and get up on there a little bit, and I'm going to show you some crimps. Okay, here I am again with another camera angle. Hopefully you can see uh, the contact stopper system a little better like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug the machine in to air and to uh, power. Um, it takes a standard 110 AC in the power strip. This is compressed air um, and uh, it just goes in the side here into the fixed pressure regulator that I showed you. Uh, the LC has uh, two 
interface controls. This is the foot pedal. I'm just going to put it over here so you can see it. Uh, and then uh, there is an on button on the cabinet. Uh, and so let me back off a little so you can see that. All right. Hopefully you can see everything. So I'm going to switch the machine on. Oh, wait. Before I do that, contacts. Uh, so uh, this is a 16 Deutsch size machine, and we have uh, developed a new shuttle that is capable of running pins and sockets with no change out. So here's some Deutsch sockets. I'm just going to put some loose parts in like that. Uh, here's some 16 gauge Deutsch pins. Because the, uh, the new LCs can run either one in the same machine with no change out. Now I'm going to switch the machine on. Uh, and you'll see power light comes on and the sensors uh, pop up. But uh, if you want to start the cycle, oh, I have to turn the vibratory ball controller on. That's the other control. So, so. And so now the ball should start filling up. Uh, pretty quickly uh, filling up the the slide here which is like a magazine um, there's a reflective sensor here and so when the slide fills up it will shut off the vibratory bowl now you'll see the little air blast is to keep the pins from chaining and training together and jamming the slide um, and it doesn't prevent the uh, uh, the sockets from running, so it's just on. And as you can see, it's fix it's uh, filling up with an undifferentiated mix of pins and sockets, uh, because this one will run them both. Uh, when it gets to the optical sensor, uh, it should shut itself off, uh, and then it'll cycle on and off uh, to keep uh, the magazine full. Uh, and it tends to do it at a rate such that an operator can't keep up with it. So there's a full magazine. Uh, and the first one, uh, if I press the pedal, it has fired a single contact up here. It was stopped at the correct position by the stopper, which then swung out of the way, um, and it's ready to crimp. Okay, now we have a contact at the crimp head, and I've zoomed way in, so hopefully you can see the mechanism. And I'm just going to take this wire, I'm going to put it into the contact, I'm going to hit the foot pedal, and there's a terminal wire. Um, once the LC is set up, it is that simple. Um, you just put it in there, and there's two terminated wires. Now, the real value of this head comes about when we're using short leads like this, because these are about a half an inch long. But I can get each one of them right up on in here. Not a wire processing technician. I'm sure you guys are faster than me. But what you can see now is that, you know, a mix of pins and sockets have been crimped onto these very short leads. Now, before I turn to the cabinet uh, and uh, some of the other mechanisms take off the cover here so you can see what's inside of it, I did want to show you how the stopper works and that it's safe. So let's say I crimp this and I just forget and I leave my hand in there. Nothing happens. I mean, it missed the contact because it, it, it hit my hand and bounced off. Um, but the air pressure on this is such that it's not coming down with enough force uh, to in any way hurt the operator. And likewise, the contacts are not being fired out with enough force uh, to hurt your hand. Now, you should wear safety goggles with this. Uh, but um, if the machine is not interfered with, it should never fire a contact at the operator. Okay, so I'm going to take the cover off and show you what's under here. Uh, but before I do that, let's have a closer look at the cover itself. You'll see that um, the new covers are stainless steel, um, and they have a series of finger guards in here, so it's impossible for the operator's finger to get in to the uh, moving parts in here. Uh, now... If you need to access this for maintenance or whatever, um, the cover comes off, uh, and I'll show you what's underneath, because these are TE-16 Deutsch 
uh, pins and sockets. Um, and the spec correct tool to crimp them um, is the uh, HDT uh, 48, uh, which is a really great tool. It's robust. Um, and uh, one of the reasons that we automate uh, hand tools instead of just using the off-the-shelf pneumatic crimpers um, and feeding them is because these tools are much more robust. Uh, back in the uh, early 90s, uh, Kurt Davis, the founder of this company, attempted to automate the off-the-shelf pneumatic tools. And, uh, you know, they'll work for a little while, but they do not have the lifespan that these tools do. And for industrial applications, if you're doing serious wire processing, you want this to be able to cycle tens of thousands of times without the tool failing. And the hand tools will do it, and those uh, pneumatic air tools, they won't. Um, so the cover is about off. You know, it's, it's pretty uh, securely attached. Um, and uh, underneath the cover is the Deutsch tool that you recognize. Um, it's actuated by this pneumatic cylinder. I'm gonna show you, it's a big boy, um, because uh, you know, we want to make sure this has enough power to crimp whatever you put on it. Um, uh, and uh, you'll also notice that the rotary contact stopper is on the same base as our funnel jaw, so it is an option to do both. You could switch out between our you know, traditional standard funnel jaws um, and the rotary contact stopper if you wanted the, uh, the additional uh, help in finding the center of the contact uh, for high speed with kind of single wires like you're making a wire harness. Okay, let's open up the cabinet and I'll show you some of the things that have changed um, as we've uh, developed this product over the last 15 years. So first off, always disconnect the air and unplug it from power uh, before you ever go into the cabinet. You should know that. Now you go into the cabinet and you'll see a whole bunch of different stuff. So uh, first of all, um, uh, this is a uh, Koyo PLC. Uh, you know, they're good little units, um, and we have a lot more inputs and outputs than we, do, than we did on the old IDEX that the uh, LC used to use, which gives us more ability to do uh, additional features. Um, uh, power supply, uh, rotary, um, uh, excuse me, vibratory bowl controller here. It's a Rodex unit. Uh, these valves are a huge upgrade from the old clipper units we used to use. These are made by Festo in Germany, um, and they are much easier to service. Uh, and they are much easier to change out. Uh, we, we really love them. Uh, and uh, these, uh, change the camera a little bit. Uh, these are the pressure regulators for the LC. So this one here sets the return pressure on the stopper, which keeps it safe so it can never hurt anybody's hand. So that's inside of the cabinet, and we encourage you guys not to mess with it because um, we, we let all of them leave the factory at a level that's safe, they're quick enough, and they're not going to hurt anybody. Uh, this is the grip pressure, um, and that controls how much force the contacts are gripped by the indenters with um, in the crimp cycle. Uh, and uh, the idea being we want to hold on to it tightly enough that you have a nice solid target and it won't move when you stick a wire into it, but we don't want to pre-crimp it to make it harder to get the wire in. So that's adjustable. Again, we should... Uh, it should leave the, uh, the, the factory here um, in good operational condition, but if you switch up, for instance, the type of Deutsch contacts you're running and the ferrule wall changes, you might actually want to adjust that, and that's how you do it. Um, we've switched to using these units with a gauge on them so you can have kind of a, a setting and be able to go to it reliably. Uh, this is the fixed pressure regulator that are now going on LCs, so they no longer need to have their own regulator. You just plug it into the air, and this will give you the proper pressure that we've tested it um, at our facility with. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, the, the LC is a simple machine, um, uh, but it's surprisingly complicated up inside of it um, in order to make it reliable. Uh, and, again, I mentioned this earlier, but what we're doing now um, with the contact sensor is um, is a big departure for the LC. I'm gonna take the camera off and pull it up under here so you can see. So this second fiber sensor is reading all the way up under here on the crimp head and into the back of the crimp head you will see the fiber going uh, to the positioner body and through the positioner. And so now the, uh, the LC's uh, crimp cycle is seeing the contact. It's a reflective sensor up in here um, and uh, when the contact arrives, it uh, engages the grip. 
And so uh, we found that um, many of the reliability issues, especially as the machines wore out later in their service life, uh, were caused by not having that level of feedback in the system. So this is the single biggest reliability enhancement that we took from the GWT line and have added to the LCs. And that combined with the rotary contact stopper, which is a new option, uh, specifically designed for multi-conductor cable, um, makes the LC quite a bit different than it was 10 years ago. 